Hey everybody, welcome to this quick tasting that I'm going to be doing with four products. We got Penelope Rosé Cask Finish. Folks, never had a Rosé Cask Finish whiskey, so giddy up. We've got Fistful of Bourbon, a blend from the house of William Grant. Now, I have had this before and I did not like it. This is a media sample, so I'm going to taste it and see if maybe they juiced up the bottle. Now, and I've got an exciting product here, Boulder Spirits, an American single malt. You know, this is a brand. It's bottled and bond. When you see bottled and bond, you get really giddy and excited because, you know, it's been in the barrel for at least four years. And then we have their straight bourbon whiskey also bottle in a bond giddy up man this is so exciting you know there it's the vapor distillery boulder spirits what a beautiful label take a look at that label isn't that gorgeous yeah i love that label look at looks it looks a little bit like game of thrones a little bit so i mentioned the fistful of bourbon was sent to me by the distillery that it was a media sample the other ones were as well. They were all uh, media samples. So these came to me at no cost to me and just wanted you to know that. So I'm gonna start off with the Fistful of Bourbon. Now this is a blend of five straight bourbon whiskeys. Now, why do they call it bourbon instead of a, uh, why do they call it a blend of uh, straights, straight bourbons versus bourbon? Because legally that's what they have to do. They disclose that they have five bourbons in there. And when you have, uh, we have these bourbons from all over, you have to call it a blend uh, versus, versus. Uh, let's take just take a look at the label here, and it says it's uh, they're aged a minimum of two years, which, whoop de damn doo doo, two years is not going to really get me too excited. Now I love that they've got they've got a, a really nice really nice design on here. Um, they've got some tasting notes. Uh, they're saying that it's uh, backbone balanced and sweet. Green. Uh, this is not the whiskey I remember tasting. Soft spice, hints of nutmeg. I definitely don't remember nutmeg. Uh, buttery toffee. No. Uh, cinnamon licorice. Maybe licorice. Maybe licorice. Okay. So. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, we can definitely say that they did not job the bottle. This is this smells just like the bottle um, that they had that I bought at a store. It smells a little bit like rub rubbing alcohol and like um, and like corn, just basic corn. Corn, alcohol, corn, alcohol, corn, alcohol. I mean, this is like, I mean, I think I paid, now this is the media sample, but I paid 25 bucks for this. And I just went, after I paid for it, I just thought to myself, why the hell did I buy that? And sure enough, two, three days later, they sent me a bottle. So if you like something that tastes like, alcohol and maybe has a hint of corn to it um and you and you crave the smell of rubbing alcohol then fistful of bourbon is right up your alley uh however for me today i'm just gonna say no no it's not doing it for me okay so let's go to the bourbon the bottled bond straight bourbon now why am i going in this order well i've never had a rose cask finish and this is also it's four grains, and it is uh, 94 proof. I have a feeling that the rosé cask finish, four grain, I think it could be a palate killer. And so I've never tasted that before. I've never had a rosé finished uh, uh, bourbon. Uh, you know, to my knowledge, I mean, this may be the first one out there. I mean, I really haven't done the research on this, but 
and I also like I'm not really seeing a lot of rose casts come up in the market. So, um, wrote that this it's just, it's just this might be an anomaly. So I'm going from a, a blend of uh, of straight bourbons to a bottled and bond bourbon. Now, what is bottled and bond? Bottled and bond is a really really important piece of legislation in our country's history. In the 1800s, there was all kinds of bad things happening to whiskey. Like they would take a barrel of whiskey and add prune juice and tobacco spit um, and even rattlesnake heads to alter the color and to kind of like try and make it, uh, you know, last a little longer. And they, the doctors and the druggists were like, we're prescribing this, this whiskey and it's not helping people because it's not pure whiskey. And so the distillers, they're like, yeah, we're getting kind of the raw end of the deal. People are having our product and, you know, we're selling it to these wholesalers and rectifiers and they're screwing it up. And, you know, it's not even our whiskey anymore. And so they all lobbied Congress to create a law that basically protected um, spirits. And it was the Bottled and Bond Act signed in 1897 by President Grover Cleveland. And it meant it had to be at least four years old, distilled at one distillery in one distilling season, one and 100 proof. And they had to uh, put all the information about where it was distilled and the, and the seasons and all that on there. And just a really, really important piece of history because it was our country's very first Consumer Protection Legislation Act. If you think about that, you know, that's pretty amazing. Like today we have the FDA. I mean, you have you have uh, you know seatbelts, you have you know roadside uh, things on the roadside to protect you, and it all began because we just wanted to make sure we had good whiskey to drink or prescribe. So here we go, coming out with a little bit of the uh, synthetic cork. I'm not a fan of the synthetic cork. I've been very open about that over the years. And the reason why is I always, sometimes I can pick up a bit of plastic. Tasting the Boulder Spirits. Bottled and Bond Bourbon Whiskey. Okay, so. It's got some funk to it. Like, I'm talking like. I'm talking like barn funk. It smells a little bit like, um, you know, some of like, some of like the earthy funkiness you get out of scotches. Yeah, there's, there's definitely something weird going on there in that funk. Yeah. Mm. Well, I had said that it. Uh, I didn't even look at the mash bills. I didn't, I didn't look at it at all. But the nose just like reminded me of a lot of like funkiness from like some some scotches, and this is really really high in barley. And this is uh, only fifty one percent corn, uh, forty four percent barley. And 5% rye. Now, here's the thing. Um, it's technically bourbon, but it doesn't smell or taste uh, like a bourbon. I mean, it's got it's got some funkiness to it. It's, it's got a, like a cross between like, like a mezcal, like uh, earthiness to it and a... Uh, like an overcooked, you know, barley scotch. And tangerines. That's a fucking weird thing to smell. Something like that. You know, I'm just going to say that I get this one. I understand it. Um, it's not for me, but you know, it's it's just it's overly that barley 
is just overly kind of like, I mean, there's a funk in here that I don't like. Like I like, I like uh, uh, Jamaican rum funk. I like the wild turkey funk. I like some of the funk that I get out of the Isla whiskeys, but this one is just, it's like, it's off balance and it's just, it's just not there. So maybe there needs to be more time in the barrel. I don't know. I'm not a distiller. I can't tell people how to fix things. I can just tell you that I don't like something or I do like it. And it's just like what I pick up. And, and this one, it's, uh, it's the funk and not the, not the funky Comadina. It's the, the funk you don't want. So let's go ahead and go on to their, uh, American single malt, which there's a movement in America to uh, give a definition of American single malt. I don't know if you all know about this, but uh, it is not uh, it is it is not something that is really taken off, and it's kind of gotten lost in a lot of the taxation discussions with whiskey. But there's a big a big battle to, to define American single malts because right now there is not a definition. That same funk, um, that same funk is here. But whereas with the bourbon, with the bourbon, the funk did not make sense. With this one, it does. It, like the, the funk gets expressed in some smokiness, like a, like a barbecue smoke. I dig. I definitely dig the single malt over the bourbon for this particular brand. And I think the single malt here, I think the single malt could, you know, could be in a, in a cabinet if you like malts um yeah i mean this is very drinkable it's very it's very much in that kind of um league of a, of a lot of other american single malts and you can taste the age on it too so there's some sweetness coming in underneath there but i think i think more importantly what what this distiller has found is that they have they have an identifiable trait uh, in their grains, and I would recommend that they use that to their advantage and find out what the sweet what the what the sweet spot is of that funk note because it could be a combination of like that barley and uh, and the yeast together, but there is a note in these two products that are very identifiable, and if you like funk, if you like earth, you are really really going to dig this, but not everybody does. And especially in bourbon, where people have an expectation of sweet, neither one of these are really going down that sweet line. Whereas an American single malt has a, it has the funk, and then comes in with some smoke, and just underneath that, there's like some apricots and so forth. But um, very interesting to see like the differences between the two. Now that is that is definitely an exploration of of whiskey. So now let's get to the. Penelope Rosé cask finish. I'll be honest with you. Just slightly nervous about this one. I'm not a... Um, I mean, I see Rosé and I like... I just want to put my feet up on... Um, um, w knowing that I've got some oysters on the way. And I just, just like... I'm relaxing. Like... I see rosé and I don't want to work. I don't want to do anything. I just want to sit back and gorge and like freaking French food and shit. So here we go. Here's the French food and shit. Yeah, they use the uh, kind of a new trend right now. Glass corks. You know, it smells like um, it 
It smells ooh la la. It smells like oak. It smells like all the sweet notes of oak you just want to smell. Now, here's the thing. I keep harping on this. It's in this week's Above the Char for uh, Bourbon Pursuit. I hate the label. I hate the label. I, I'm tired of seeing bourbon with these finishes, especially straight bourbon. And I understand that it is you're supposed to have it on there, but I'd love to see like either the definition of bourbon has a subcategory. We move in that direction where it has a subcategory or these products start calling themselves whiskey and start putting on the back label, you know, that it's a bourbon finished in something. Because right now it's it's not bourbon. It's a distilled spirit specialty. And you can say I'm being a hater. You can say I'm not, uh, you know, being open-minded or whatever. But I do know this. I, knew, I know that other countries are looking at how well we protect the term bourbon. And the minute we give them an inch, they're going to start making bourbon. They're going to say, well, you don't even respect your own terms and definition of what bourbon is. So why should we? And that's going to happen one day if we don't start protecting the term bourbon, which whole nother story, whole nother story. As for the product, I kind of like it. There's some grapefruit in here. Um, there's some like uh, raw cookie dough. A lot of raw cookie dough. There's like a sugar cookie. Uh, some ginger, some cardamom. And um, it's a nice smoke. Yes, but it's like a charcoal smoke. So you can see like like it's like uh, being... Mm, like some of the... Like the rosé like soften what might have been a really like uh, charcoal-y kind of uh, bourbon. So, yeah, I mean, while I do, do not like the labeling, I don't like the putting, like, the barrel finish things on there with, with bourbon, uh, I do indeed like the taste of this product. I think this is, um, I think this has potential to contend in my uh, barrel finish uh, barrel finish category, which is coming up in a live stream soon. So, yeah, I definitely, I definitely dig this. But, you know, we in this tasting today, we definitely have like one one, in my opinion, like one loser, uh, one like maybe if you like a certain style um, and then one that you don't um, you'll really like if you like if, if you like some uh, some funk and some smoke. So I, I just think that you this was a we this was a weird flight for me to choose. So. The reason why I put these all together was because they were next in the rotation to taste. And uh, I'm thinking maybe I should uh, change that up a little bit and instead of doing next rotation. Uh, maybe pair them a little bit more where the palate won't go all over the place because it went all over the place today. But I appreciate you all tuning in. Uh, I do recommend the Penelope Rosé Cask Finish Whiskey. Uh, 94 proof limited edition quite tasty if you are in a, into being uh, experimental and testing how much you like the funk and some smoke go chase the um, boulder spirits uh, single malt and i do not recommend you waste your money on this one so that's going to do it for this episode if you like what you've seen here if you like honest reviews click that subscribe button and by the way the membership community here at youtube saw all of this live that's right this was done on a live stream with my members only community and if you'd like to become a member just click the join button next to the subscribe button and you'll get to see content before it goes live and you'll know what i like before everybody else does which means you get a head start to the store. So thank you so much for joining me. Be safe out there. Don't go licking handrails. Don't go licking trash cans. And remember, vodka sucks unless it's being used for hand sanitizer. Cheers.